dear students in the present module on various instructional strategies and its application on content uh, we'll try to deliberate on some of uh, the issues which are cropping in the minds of uh, the professionals and uh, the society also uh, like you know uh, we'll try to analyze in this the concept of teaching in a traditional way and in the changing scenario uh, in this module we'll also try to understand various instructional strategies and how teachers will be able to know different instructional strategies. In addition to that, how they'll, they can apply those instructional strategies on content. This will be uh, the total content of uh, this module. Friends, as all you know that, you know, the classroom situations have changed over uh, past 20 years. Uh, we used to have different kind of classrooms uh, initially wherein teacher used to be authority and students used to accept that authority. But presently, uh, probably the things have changed. The students question you. Why they question? Because there's a lot of inflow of information and all the information is in their hands. All the time that information is coming through internet, in through their uh, smartphones and through their laptops. In that scenario, the teaching itself is becoming challenging. So in this context, you know, we need to understand teaching and we need to understand how as teachers, I can effectively engage students into effective teaching and learning. Let us evolve the concept of teaching. In traditionally, teaching was considered to be an act of imparting instructions to the learners in the classroom situation. It is a traditional classroom teaching. Traditionally, the concept of teaching was considered as an act of imparting instructions to the learners in the classroom situation. It is traditional classroom teaching. In traditional classroom teaching, the teacher gives information to students or one of the students reads from a textbook while the other students silently follow him in their not merely imparting knowledge or information to students. Whereas now things are different. Teaching is to cause the pupil to learn and acquire the desired knowledge, skills and also desirable ways of living in the society. It is a process in which learner, teacher, curriculum and other variables are organized in a systematic and psychological way to attain some predetermined goals. Some experts view about concept of teaching. Ryburn says that teaching is a relationship with which keeps the child to develop all his powers. Burton viewed teaching as the stimulation, guidance, direction and encouragement of learning. Teaching for me is the interaction between teacher and taught. When I'm saying teacher, teacher to me means the one who possesses more knowledge than the other person in a particular area. And student or taught is the one who is willing to learn, not the one who is just sitting in your classroom. So when there is interaction between the one who knows and the one who is willing to know what other intends to tell, that interaction is teaching but that interaction must have some objective and that objective has to be very specified. And the objective in teaching is, you know, when there is the intent to develop the cognition of the student by giving facts, principles, theories, the content effectively, then our mind develops. Thereafter, not only cognition, but cognitive domain, wherein, you know, my psychological connect to my actions is made very effective meaning thereby the teacher is giving a lot of experiences in the classroom where my psyche, my mind is connected very effectively to my body organs and I'm able to perform things. So that's the third thing and the last that is affective domain. So when I'm developing a belief system, I'm developing a value structure, if these three things, meaning thereby knowledge, skills and attitudes, if this, the development of these three things is aimed by the teacher through that interaction then that interaction is known as teaching matter of drawing out training of the education matter of adjustment preparation for life causes to learn professional activity is basically characteristics of a good teaching now let me come to instructional strategy here i like to define differentiate between teaching and instruction also you know, when uh, there is an interaction between teacher and taught to develop cognition, connective and affective domain of personality. 
then this is teaching but when there is an interaction between teacher and taught for developing only cognition aspect then probably this is instruction so instructional strategies the strategies which help a teacher to develop their mind effectively those instructional strategies are techniques which teachers use to help students become independent strategic learners these strategies become learning strategies when students independently select the appropriate ones and use them effectively to accomplish task or meet goals instructional strategies can motivate students and help them focus attention organize information for understanding and remembering monitor and assess learning instructional strategies that are especially effective in education program they include blended learning flipped learning collaborative learning e learning concept mapping cooperative learning and many more most of these uh, uh, techniques uh, they have been incorporated into this uh, module because we just wanted that you know those strategies which are really helpful in the challenging classrooms classrooms wherein the students they are techno savvy the students who have all the facilities of uh, uh, you know digital tools and internet connectivity so all these things are available not only at homes of uh, the students but in learning places also institutions also most of the institutions they have wifi connectivity throughout their campuses so in this this scenario uh, wherein uh, you know we have lot of uh, facilities and lot of challenges along with them you need different kind of strategies so one strategy which i like to discuss here would be blended learning as a teacher in higher education we need to know that today uh, there is a compulsion on the part of the teacher wherein they have to they have to incorporate some offline mode learning and some online learning because students are learning and students have uh, some digital tools with them through which they are independently also learning so when you have facility also and students they have that pedagogy also to learn through online sources so it's better for a teacher to blend both things and make use of these techniques to further or enhance learning outcome of students blended learning is an approach to education that combines online educational material and opportunities for interaction online with traditional place based classroom methods it requires the physical presence of both teacher and student with some elements of student control over time place path or place benefits of blended learning are that you know a blended learning model is undoubtedly a great way to augment the learner's experience but its advantages go beyond that teaching through ICT saves time for creative thinking engage the students in learning environment to update the knowledge students got the advantage of extra learning through internet facility without losing social interaction with teachers qualities like self motivation self responsibility discipline etc are developed blended learning offers the learner convenience and flexibility they have the ability to control their learning pace and learn remotely academic research suggests that blended learning gives learners a more comprehensive understanding of the course content because blended learning allows learners to interact with instructors and fellow learners friends before we move on to the next instructional strategy let me give you certain different type formats of uh, blended learning in blended form you know you are, you can have uh, four uh, kind of uh, classroom setups one classroom setup is wherein traditionally there is a teacher and there is a group of students uh, teacher is teaching making use of uh, blackboard or whiteboard so teacher is the authority and students are dependent on uh, the teacher is a traditional kind of uh, format of a classroom this is one aspect which has to be there and you know which can't be replaced even today but second format which is evolving uh, in many of the institution is wherein there is a classroom classroom is equipped with most of the ICT tools for example there is a interactive board uh, you have uh, already stored PPTs and you can just start your teaching uh, you can have online access uh, you know while teaching uh, whatsoever you are writing on the whiteboard that is stored you can go forth and come back again uh, what you have already uh, written on the black uh, whiteboard so that is the 
kind of uh, platform you have in some kind of formats so one is total traditional where is there is only whiteboard or blackboard second is this technology rich environment rich 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 facilities you have in the classroom and teacher and students both are equipped with ICT tools to work on that uh, third category you know which comes in online uh, and that is you know uh, as a teacher uh, when I'm teaching in the classroom I'm giving some experiences to the students wherein they can access some online videos so supplementing classroom with some online resources this is third format and fourth format is total online courses so once we have four formats four different formats in classroom setting all you know when we blend one format with other that is kind of blended learning and uh, many a times we have seen that you know when uh, when you know when we are using blended learning we are trying to address to the individual needs of the learners there are certain students who can learn very effectively when they see things they are students who learn very effectively when they hear something there are certain different kind of uh, students those who learn effectively when they are doing something and there are certain students who wants to be very independent so they want to decide what they have to learn what they have to learn how they have to learn everything they want to decide so they are very independent and creative students so when you have different types of learners uh, in the classroom you need different types of formats and that format could be like you know I am uh, you know teaching the classroom I initiated certain issues then what I do is I make them certain small groups ask them to deliberate on certain issues in a disciplined way where you are working as a facilitator then in third format the, the, the outcome which has come from that mode they are sent to some computer lab when they are asked to work independently and work on a project and then come back to the traditional classroom where they make reports so different formats of a, a blend could be thought of and it depends on the creativity of the teacher how does he blend different modes to make effective classroom teaching and learning after talking about blended learning let me come to another strategy which is very interesting uh, that's known as flipped learning uh, I, I don't know how many of you have heard of it but it's a very interesting uh, and useful uh, you know uh, technique of uh, teaching a flipped classroom is one in which teacher do not simply lecture to students for the entire classroom period rather teachers work with students to solve problem sets or otherwise directly interact with the students what would traditionally be a face-to-face -face lecture is recorded and posted online or offline for the students to watch as homework thus the traditional lecture at school and do problems at home model is inverted or flipped flipping a classroom is an instructional strategy and a type of blended learning that reverses the traditional educational arrangement by delivering instructional content outside of the class and moves activities including those that may have traditionally been considered homework in the classroom students here I like to elaborate a little about flipped learning because I think this is something you know which every student can work at their own level uh, what happened you know uh, they are different levels of thinking when student comes in the classroom he is most of the time delivered content to understand that or to apply at the most but there are cert certain higher order thinking skills like analysis synthesis evaluation creating all these things these are not taken care by the teachers and many a time excuses that you know they don't have time so completing syllabus in such a manner that they can really work uh, they, they can really perform well in the examination is an objective by the teacher so in that exercise what happens is uh, the higher objective uh, creativity analyzing things synthesizing things that is a that is a casualty so in this context what happens is a teacher at own home can record a video integrate what he's talking and a structured PPT and you know once he delivers he prepares that uh, that video he can share that through some Google Drive or some other media with all his 
students and students they are free to see that and reflect on it so after 4 5 days he comes to the class and then tries to attend to their queries now what he used to teach earlier in the classroom is being recorded and shared with the students and students are working on that or seeing that uh, uh, you know video uh, at their own pace at their own time so no a limitation is there so in that context when they come to the class after a week or so in between they keep on uh, reflecting uh, through online mode and when they come for a class there's only one thing which teacher has to do he has to really work on reflection he has to just work on different issues the students ideas uh, with respect to that content so what we were doing earlier in the classroom now we are doing at home and what we used to do in the form of assignments at home now we are discussing that in the classroom wherein we are developing lot of decision making lot of critical thinking lot of uh, you know problem solving so these are some of the advantages uh, in addition to these advantages this uh, blended learning promotes peer interaction and collaborative skills it also fosters independent learning it makes learning central rather than teaching because the uh, teacher has uh, given some content uh, in the way teacher teaches in the classroom and thereafter in students are independently learning and uh, you know deliberating on that personalized learning is another advantage of it hard student engagement is another uh, you know advantage of flip learning so you know uh, in uh, flip learning uh, we can create our own videos of ppt and can share through some collaborative modes otherwise we can take some videos already prepared videos which are prepared and uh, you know hosted by swam or swam prabha or uh, you know youtube so different uh, material which is already produced by different people that can also be used with some input by the teacher so this is how we can make uh, a different kind of uh, uh, setup in the classroom where classroom like class uh, students are meeting in the classroom once a week but they are continuously engaging or engaged with the teacher 24 by 7 friends the third uh, instructional strategy in this module is collaborative learning uh, today is a world of collaboration we are looking for lot of collaborative activities through uh, you know social media not only that even educational activities they are conducted more on collaborative a uh, way like you know different institutions are collaborating with one another with respect to their strengths and weaknesses so collaborative learning uh, is an educational approach to teaching and learning that involves groups of students working together to solve a problem complete a task or create a product there are five essential elements uh, you know which are there uh, in collaborative learning this is what uh, johnson and his colleagues in 1990 claimed and they are that there has to be positive interdependence in collaborative work one there has to be considerable interaction there has to be individual accountability and personal responsibility and there has to be social skills and group self evaluating so these are some five uh, you know basic characteristics which are required in any collaborative work some of the benefits of collaborative teaching and learning for students are that this enhances problem solving skills it inspires critical thinking it improves social interactions and supports diversity it also aids to the development of self management skills development of oral communication skills it fosters the development of interpersonal relationship some of the popular apps for collaborative learning are g suite which is helpful for collaborative learning it includes google docs google slides blogger google drive Google Classroom, etc. Only thing is that all these tools they are quite uh, familiar to us, but probably we are not using it for the purpose of effective teaching and learning and for collaborative uh, learning. Uh, less from today itself, start using these apps for making our classroom teaching and learning effective through collaborative activities. The fourth instructional strategy is e-learning. E-learning means learning through internet with the help of electronic devices. e-learning is a use of telecommunication technology to deliver information for education and training e-learning is also known as online learning virtual learning network and web based learning some of the advantages of e-learning are this is a innovative teaching learning processor 
it is uh, real time and active learning it improves productivity in classroom it introduces abstract concepts it increases teacher effectiveness it targets multiple intelligence one of uh, the example for e learning is through swim portal i think most of you are aware of it it is study webs of active learning for young aspiring minds the swim program offers digital classroom with the help of internet and satellite connectivity to the remotest corner in the country swim is essentially a portal which has been formulated as a solution to the problem of difficult access to physical educational infrastructure and teachers along with study material and textbook in the initial phase courses were offered by iits bombay madras kanpur guwahati igno university of delhi jawaharlal nehru now uh, many of uh, uh, the indian universities under who develop uh, you know online courses under nrc they have also started developing these courses and you know posting on swim friends there is another technique uh, uh, you know another digital initiative by government of india that is swim prabha i think uh, uh, many of us have heard of it but we are not utilizing the benefit of swim prabha swim prabha basically is a group of 32 dts channels every day there will be new content for at least 4 hours which will be repeated five more times in a day let me clarify here that you know uh, every subject has got some dedicated channels and on those dedicated channels some content is being delivered some experts they are delivering some content and that content which content is being displayed is already posted on swim uh, you know swim prabha's uh, website so if i am a teacher of uh, geography then i can always see that which are the channels which is the content which is coming on the channels on swim prabha and can always advise my students that in addition to what i am teaching you they can supplement that with swam prabha under swam prabha dta channels shall cover the following one is they'll cover higher education courses they'll cover school education courses they'll also cover curriculum based courses that can meet the needs of lifelong learners of indian citizens in india and abroad and interestingly this will also cover and assist students who are studying in 11th and 12th and they are preparing for competitive examination lastly i'll try to introduce another concept that's known as moodle that is modular object oriented dynamic learning environment this is a very popular flexible virtual learning environment that is designed to support face to face teaching with a wide range of versatile online tools as well as providing a place to upload resources for courses basically moodle mobile app is available in google play app store and window phone stores and this is a learning management system if you register yourself and your students on this portal and then you know you you can always specify learning outcomes of your course and then post some online resources on that portal students will be free and will be interacting on that online uh, available resources and after going through they can give their feedback and that feedback would come to you similarly that content can be online assessed online and accordingly we can identify what are the weak weak areas where individual students they are facing some difficulty and accordingly upload some uh, you know online resources which can help individual students so this is a online uh, learning management system which if institutions adopt can really help us design our curriculum design the implementation of our curriculum and get online assessment and feedback for the students for effective teaching and learning uh with these uh, uh, you know some of the strategies i i i i would like to make a comment that you know there are lot many instructional strategies there's no end to it uh, cooperative learning strategies wherein you can make different kind of groups make different kind of strategies and make students work in different formats and make them cooperate learn in a cooperative way uh, what i'm trying to say is there are a lot many strategies of teaching only thing is as teachers we need to really look forward and develop ourselves make continuous professional development uh, with respect to what new is coming and uh, that should be for the betterment of uh, students performance thank you so much